pastor of the Canaan Baptist Church of Wilmington. Greeting you, my brothers and my sisters. Inviting you to help me celebrate, and the entire community, the great leadership of Dr. Twin B. Brown. Dr. Brown is my friend, my colleague, and a great community servant. He's done so much for our community. He is preoccupied with helping the least of these. God has blessed his ministry over the years and the decades in our city. I'm supporting Dr. Brown. Why don't you join me in supporting and celebrating the great ministry of Dr. Twin B. Brown? You've been good to me. I'm just sitting here thinking about it. Looking back over my life. You with our president of city council, Councilman um, Norman Griffin to read. For our city council wishes to recognize the outreach work the Reverend Benjamin Twin B. Brown is providing through the video production hands-on workshop and production company. And whereas, though a native of Daytona Beach, Florida, Reverend Brown is an adopted Wilmingtonian, he immediately made his mark in the down-home charm. He owned and operated a successful electronic sales and repair business, he invested and promoted spiritual programs that involve youth and his signature video production company to give youth hands-on experience in production and the opportunity for them to showcase their talents on stage and on television. His shows are also a vehicle that brings local news and events to the Newcastle County communities. And whereas Reverend Brown attributes his success to God for giving him the vision that opened doors of opportunity for him, his youth participants and staff, his testimony can be summed up in Psalm 27, chapters 13 and 14. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the council of the city of Wilmington that this council recognizes Reverend Benjamin Twin B. Brown for making a difference in the lives of Delawareans. God bless you for a job well done. Hi, this is Elizabeth Souter. My husband, Dean Banks, a technical producer for CCC, introduced me to Pastor Brown five years ago. We hit it off right away. And I began working with Servant Brown, doing voiceovers for his video production workshop. That helped me realize the contributions of Twin B. Brown to Black History. As we celebrate Black History Month, let's not forget our founder and director of Community Communications Corporation, Dr. Benjamin Twin B. Brown, with over 70 years of community contributions. I believe that positive broadcasting was important. I was only able to convince Rollins Cable Company to start the Lease Access. And the Lease Access wasn't started only because the cable company was so happy about starting the local cell. My job with the cable company was to get African Americans to buy cable. And I passed an ordinance supported by City Council to activate the educational channel. Special thanks to Newcastle County Executive Thomas P. Gordon for being the first financial partner in supporting the promotions and community day-to-day -day participations in the Education's Comcast Channel 965 TV. Even the workshop which you played a part in helping me get the first funding, yes, you and the late state representative Al Platt helped me get the first funding, 
it started when I was working for Reverend Heron at the community center there. Yes. We trying to get an education in the in the public channel. In Maryland, I uh, I spent a lot of time there. I have family there, and uh, my my two grandkids, my daughter and my son, all live there. And I, as a matter of fact, when I leave here, that's where I'm on my way. Um, one Sunday I got up and I was watching television there and I looked at this educational channel that comes on in D.C. and then I was in a, in a part of Maryland and I watched the same thing. I was so impressed because it showed kids right from a certain part of the community that they focused on who were in a spelling bee. It showed kids who were involved in, in computer labs. It showed kids who were involved in intramural sports. It showed kids who were involved in band. Uh, and that, so we, Wilmington will have a channel that will be dedicated to educating our young people and educating our community. Reverend Brown is, is the one that uh, actually started it and provided a tremendous amount of background for me to help with the negotiations. Say so thank you because if it had not been for Twin B, I probably would not be sitting here today. He made commercials for me, he helped to promote me, and he say, came up with the slogan, it's not the party, but the person. Yes. And so at that time, uh, I was represented by another party, but he saw wisdom in uh, helping me get elected, and I want to thank him. And I did promise to marry him. You and I got to know each other, and I saw what you were providing uh, and had seen but hadn't met you, uh, that, that it was clear that this was an area that, that, that I wanted to, to, to help because you know one person can only do so much Absolutely. and that's where you need to work together. Regardless to, to the level of, of, of a person's intelligence, if you provide opportunities for that person to work and make an honest living, everybody is not college bound, they're not college material. You know so many people in the community and I know different people in the community. If we bring those people together, uh, and, and make something good happen for, for young people in the city of Wilmington and young people in the Newcastle County around the city of Wilmington so that, that our community in, in both the narrow sense of your street or my street but also our neighborhoods and the entire county and the state are better because we've gotten 1, 2, 10, 15, 20 children, uh, young people trained. Uh, that is the most important thing that we can be working on. But if you have opportunities of trades where people can prepare themselves to make a living, that's the only way you're going to take drugs and stuff off the street. Because the people who are involved in drugs now are there because this is their only way to make money. Every time somebody does something, usually other folks will want to come by and say, well, it's some motivation by it and want to put something on it. For all those years, he was out there in senior high rise, uh, making sure that they had uh, dinners at Thanksgiving and Christmas. I really would like to encourage as many of you as possible to give towards the turkey giveaway program. Reverend Twinby Brown has been doing his Herculean task year after year, and thousands of people have been helped by this program. Hi, my name's County Executive Chris Coons. I want to thank Reverend Twinbree Brown and Community Communications for taking the lead in organizing this year's countywide turkey giveaway to shut-ins, to seniors, to those in need. The turkey thing would not be. Yes. You started yes. that yes. way before anybody yes. else thought yes. of it. Yes. I remember when we even cooked the meals. Absolutely, yes. And we had my whole shuttle service. Yeah. It's our seniors who led the way before us and who gave us an example of what we're supposed to do. So we want to say thank you for teaching us the, the importance of giving back and, and taking care of those who came before us. So we want to thank you also for leading the way for us. And doing things for folks who would never say thank you again, never be able to seek him. The uh, uh, recent things that I started within the last few years is going really strong now. Uh, through the courtesy of T&H Bail Bond, we give the oldest senior every month $100.
So I, I want to say to you that uh, um, from me, my, my wife, my family, and then from the community, I'm, I'm sure from a large part of the community, I want to say thank you. You've been um, uh, faithful. You've been committed. You've been um, on Sunday mornings. You allow gospel to come into homes. Uh, and, and I'm sure everybody appreciates it. So a great big thank you ought to be going out to you right now. I thank God that uh, at uh, my age, uh, I can look back over my life and feel good about the accomplishments that he have enabled me to accomplish with the help of others. A young preacher came to town. Apostle Weeks had a problem. Within that first year, he was burnt out of his apartment. He was away, and his apartment got burnt down. Okay. His wife was on the balcony, had to be rescued. And to the rescue came Reverend Brown. I was on a mission trip in the Caribbean when I got a word that my wife and I uh, was rescued off the balcony. Yeah. My two children were on their way home from school. Yeah. That, uh, and everything was destroyed in the fire. Yeah. Uh, when I came back, I got a call from somebody I did not know okay. named Twinby Brown and uh, Linda Henry. And they put on a benefit yeah. for somebody they did not know and uh, raised some very needed money <laughs> to carry me through a very tough time. And so tonight, we are, we are very happy to be able to give in the spirit of community certificate of excellence and appreciation to Reverend Benjamin Twin B. Brown. But we want the people in our community to know that we see you, we watch you, and we're proud of you, and we appreciate you. We appreciate you so much. You were nominated by the, uh, the August Quarterly Committee. And uh, this summer, he, he made the history of our church part of the Summer Work Youth Program. My wife and I still remember that, remember that love effort, remember that night. Yeah. And it was a great encouragement. And I, and I want to say it because I want people to know his heart. You know, he did this uh, not knowing, not understanding, not just because he wanted to, and it was right. The only way you're going to stop the flow of guns, which means stop the violence in the community, is over those people involve other alternatives. Uh, people try to get around the facts. Uh, there are different uh, programs, there are different community outreaches that set up to try to, uh, under the towel of stopping the violence, stopping the guns and all that. But anybody who uh, really real, for real about doing that, have to look at the facts. Uh, when you, you're making a cake or doing anything, you have to have certain ingredients. That's just like life. If you want to stop something, you've got to look at what it takes to stop it. So if you have young people dropping out of school every day at will, at will, uh, uh, even those who should be made to go to school are dropping out. Parents don't impose it and keep them in school or make them stay in school. So starting at 12 years old, you got kids dropping out of school. They have no education. Uh, most of them don't have the training that I had when I was coming up. And I was coming up, I had an uncle that was a fix-up man in the community. And I would go with him on different jobs and he would do everything, plumbing and everything else in the community. Governor Jack Markell, uh, Twin is a legend uh, in 
Delaware and, and certainly the cable access community beyond Delaware. He has trained generations of young people in media production, professional interviewing, and the like. Uh, I don't know that there really is anybody in Newcastle County who don't, doesn't know about Twin V or who hasn't worked, watched uh, some of his great productions. I am just really proud uh, to be a Twin V supporter. And Twin, keep it going. Without an education, without any kind of a training, uh, they are going to become a part of the mix of the community. And what I mean by that, if they're not in school, uh, they don't have a job, then they're going to hit the streets. They're going to become a part of the streets. What is out there in the streets for somebody who have no knowledge, who have no training, uh, who have no education? Uh, the thing that they see and the thing that they're going to be introduced to is violence and drugs and all of that. So this is the thing where if they see they can pick up a dollar, where they can uh, 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 do like everybody else. They can't do anything else, so they have to get involved with what they can do. Our community, because of you, is a lot more informed, a lot more educated about the major public policy issues that confront us. And so our community, Twin B, is a much better place in which to live because of your many contributions. And so with that, I want to, representing the committee, give you a gift tonight, which um, um, give it to you with much love, much appreciation, much thanks for all that you've done and with a lot of love and Godspeed for you in whatever you might do or continue to do in the future. And here is our gift to you. So people get involved with uh, guns because they want to get in touch with guns. They, what, what they have involved themselves in, crime and violence, then that requires them to have guns uh, to either... Uh, uh, to to do the violence or to protect themselves. So that, that's how they get into the guns. It, it's not that they are uh, uh, fact, They've been manufacturing guns all the time. But people and people have had guns, but use them for the right purpose. Use them for protection. They didn't use them for going out robbing people. This is Bishop Aretha Morton. At the Tabernacle Full Gospel Baptist Cathedral, and also the State Bishop for the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, State of Delaware. Dr. Brown has been such a great asset in our community. You know, uh, Reverend Brown and I go back a long way. We go back to the good old Newark days when the television studio was in Newark and we were down there shivering in the cold and sometimes with hip boots on, uh, just trying to stay warm, but yet and still giving uh, the viewing audience a uh, personal and perfected uh, television show. You just need to say something about Reverend Brown. And that's quite true because I would not be on to heal a time. The only way you're going to stop drugs is for people to be educated and give our young people other alternatives. If you have an education of where you can qualify for a job uh, to make money, to make a decent living, then you're going to have a job. But if you don't have an education to get a job, you don't know how to do anything, then you will become, like you say, an empty wagon makes a lot of noise. Well, a person without an education, they are vulnerable to anything that's offered to them. And what's really being offered to them is drugs and violence and that type of thing. Drugs is one of the simplest things that the drug dealer can get. All he has to do is let you go out and, 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 and recruit people to sell drugs to them. And by that, in the community, in the local community, then the young people begin to uh, 
uh, take on to ownership of different turfs. And they, that's, that's where they're making their living. They're not going to let anybody interfere with it. So that's where you get a lot of the shooting. Uh, most of the shooting, uh, people say it comes from conversation. But most of the shooting when they come down to drugs is either somebody owing somebody money or somebody trying to take their turf. It's one of the two things. You're not just going to argue with somebody to be arguing with them. If you got an argument, it's you didn't pay or something, or you didn't try to keep your promise or something like that. The result is arguing, but there's a reason for the argument. It's just not an everyday argument because you look better than I do, or you dress better than I do. You got people out there who are making millions of dollars off drugs, then they're going to find a way to get them in. It, it's a business. It's a business to the drug dealer. It's a, it's a business just like any other business. Uh, they, they hire people, they have lieutenants and sergeants and all kinds of people working for them. It's an organization. So if you got an organization, it's just like any other company. You're gonna make arrangements for uh, uh, distribu distributing what you uh, have to sell. On behalf of the Serenity Gathering Place and the Mother African Union Church, I don't even have to go into detail about this great man. Myself, I don't know about you guys, but I'm proud of this man. He has helped me come along with all of us quickly working behind the scenes. This year, because of his input and some of the ideas that he gave me, every morning at 6 o'clock we used to meet at Libby's restaurant, and he would give me some type of idea that we could use to make this thing go a little further. The August Quarterly Festival, also called Big Quarterly, is an annual celebration to commemorate the founding of the Union Church of Africans, the first African-American church independently incorporated in the United States. Simply put, it is a celebration of African-American religious freedoms in the United States. The August Quarterly, which began in 1814, became a kind of Independence Day to black people on the Delmarva Peninsula. And you notice the promos that he did this year for August Quarterly. Evan Benjamin Twenby Brown and his video production workshop for having completed still another year of outstanding public service uh, to our Wilmington community. As most of us know, Reverend Brown and his video production workshop have been invaluable resources in providing news reporting and news analysis, TV news analysis, having to do with a wide range of public policy issues and political issues affecting our Wilmington community. In fact, I think it can be said that our Wilmington community is a much better place in which to live because of the timely and excellent news reporting and news analysis that we have gotten from Reverend Brown and his video production workshop. So Reverend Brown, I salute you, and I salute the video production uh, workshop uh, for all the, the great things you're doing in our Wilmington community uh, in recognition of your great work, and would encourage other people to come forward and contribute as well. Why is August quarterly important? African Independent Church Movement began some years before the Big Quarterly Festival. In 1805, Peter Spencer, born into captivity, who at that time had his freedom, led approximately 40 people out of the predominantly white Asbury Methodist Episcopal Church. All the Spencers and the others started separate churches at that time. They remained connected to the white denomination under uncompromising guidelines. By 1813, Peter Spencer and William Anderson, another leader with Spencer, led a group of persons to leave their church to organize the Union Church of African Members in September 1813. The Big Quarterly is a commemoration and celebration of that religious exodus. Festival during the years of slavery provided a rare platform for those Africans held captive to worship God with each other as well as with free men and women. The festival provided a forum for free African Americans to discuss colonization and other issues of slavery. It also gave some people the opportunity to escape slavery. This was so prevalent that some whites became suspicious of the August Quarterly Festival and older people in the black community sometimes referred to the festival as big excursions on the Underground Railroad. The event commemorates the founding of African Union Methodism. 
Those who were affiliated with the Spencer churches are reminded of the bitter struggles of Peter Spencer, William Anderson, and the 40 or so other blacks who struck a great blow for religious freedom. A year after Peter Spencer's death in 1843, and until today, the ceremony includes a replaying to remember the leader of all African Union churches. The festival kept alive the ecumenical spirit among African American church men and women of every variety of backgrounds. At one time, black churches in Wilmington and the surrounding communities of various denominations and backgrounds were closed down on Big Quarterly Sunday to join the festival. The Big Quarterly over the year has been made a time of the union, religious revival, and celebration of freedom for the people. Everybody in the city was saying, what did you do to get him to do it? It's because he loved African Union churches. This is I'm Ivan Thomas um, of DETV. We thank you, Twin. You know, we celebrate you. We came today and, and find it no fault uh, to celebrate your time on this planet and what you've done for Wilmington. Thank you so much. Twin, you have been uh, one that my grandfather used to always say, uh, stand your ground. And you have stood your ground. Always with... Uh, when I get an opportunity to talk about Twimby, I like to talk about his heart. Over the years, led many efforts in our community, feeding thousands, uh, working from early in the morning to late at night on a, on a particular uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas Eve, and then the months before all of that in the planning and preparation. Uh, not for pay, not for, just just so that somebody can be happy and well fed. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that uh, my career started with Channel 28. Um, I met Dr. Benjamin Twimmy Brown uh, through the Metropolitan Wilmington Urban League. Um, I knew right away I wanted to be in broadcast journalism. Um, I wanted to only be in front of the camera, but Dr. Benjamin Twimmy Brown taught me the importance of making sure you're not handicapped in any area. Uh, thank you so much for being that mentor in my life, so many others' life, and thank you for planting that seed. I'm um, super excited to be here, guys. Twin Beezy. I always laugh because I call him Twin Beezy, and everybody's asking me why do I call him Twin Beezy, and it's like a youthful approach to Twin B. <laughs> and glad that we are able to dedicate the control room in his name, and he's able to have something at home that says this is mine. This is something that I hate. I helped create, and this is my legacy. You know, peace and grace to all. I'm Rochelle Wilson, and um, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Brown, because I was a sassy 17-year-old, had just moved here from Philadelphia. One day, Twin was at some sort of a park thingy doing something, and I just being who I am, walked up behind him and said, I can do better than her. He told me what it was that he was promoting at this park event and handed me the microphone. Why did he do that? Um, I spent the next 15, 20 years working in radio and just broadcast journalism, um, applied for several jobs in television, but they would not take me because I had a crooked mouth. And they said, you won't look right with a crooked mouth. No one's going to watch a broadcast with a crooked mouth. You're a bad anchor. You can't do it. Twin said something to me that once again changed my life. He said, it's okay if you have a crooked mouth as long as the stories that you're telling are the truth. I never forgot that. 
and I then went on to become a high school teacher and teach media journalism to young students because I felt that was the next generation. So if it weren't for you, Twin, I wouldn't be who I am today. And thank you for taking a chance on a sassy, defiant 17-year-old because it turned out pretty well. And may you live forever here. I first of all thank God that I'm able to stand here and receive all the special comments and receive all the gratitudes that's been expressed in the day. I, I, it's hard for me to even try to explain how grateful I am because it was nothing but the Lord that have brought me this far. Trials and tribulations and all of that, I never let get in my way. And for those of you who know me, know that I don't give up. I'll give out before I give up. So I just want to thank everybody for everything that you've done, everything that you're doing. And I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Ivan Thomas for what they have done. That conversation that I had with you, I talked to many people about many things, but it was one that I will always remember the longest day I live. I just want to tell you that. I've been knowing you a long time, we've worked together and all. But when you called me that day, it was something about that conversation. It was something about the phone call. Something about the way you greeted me when I came here. That I will never forget as long as day I live. I want to thank God for you, Mrs. Thomas. I met you. I hadn't met you, but I met you here working. And the hospitality that you showed me, I, I, I want you to know I appreciate it so very much. I didn't even know he was here. This is Donnie Thomas. He was with me over 20, right. over 20 some Brown, years. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. He's man. now in Las Vegas, man. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, grace and peace. Uh, this is, this is. Memories and boy, I had a speech for me. We ain't gonna go there. I'm just <laughs> gonna get right down to it. Like I twin said, about 20 years or so, uh, I had the opportunity of being the, the director of operation under Twin B. Brown for the 20 years, and I had an opportunity of seeing how Twin actually did the, the workshops dealt in the community, and I was hooked right then and there. Uh, I was right there with him, building, moving from studio to studio. I was right there with him. Uh, teaching the classes and the workshop and what I actually did was I saw what twin was doing and I wanted to take it in the next generation I wanted to keep doing what he was doing uh, with the community with the teaching the workshop as well I wanted to mention Marvin uh, I, I've been in contact with Marvin uh, Marvin also was one of the main people who was there and working things out. He and I also are working together, uh, and he couldn't make it out here. So I just want to just to say, Mar Marvin, give his his appreciation and thanks to you for all the workshop. And he and I have been working together to put this program to see Twin B Brown Community Communication Corporation go in the next generation with the new millennium. So thank you, Twin. I really appreciate the opportunity. I would like to be remembered. Remember that one who have have tried to make his life uh, be an example for somebody else.
Attention everyone on Medicare. New Medicare Advantage plans are now available. Did you know that you may be eligible for additional Medicare-approved benefits that include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more? The Medicare Benefits Hotline is now open. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you qualify for additional Medicare benefits and make sure you're getting all the benefits you deserve. Just call 800-520-3805 now. In addition to dental, vision, hearing, and prescription drug coverage, you may also qualify for $0 monthly premiums, $0 deductibles, and no co-pays. Just call the toll-free number on your screen now to see if you're eligible for additional Medicare benefits that may include free eyeglasses, free hearing aids, free meal delivery, free rides to medical appointments, and much more. The call and Medicare benefits review are absolutely free. There's no obligation to enroll. Just call 800-520-3805 to see if you qualify. They come to make you strong. Floating on the sea of trouble. Sorrow falling like rain from the sky. Trotting through life's murky waters. Trials form the tears in your eyes. Don't. Telling you there's a blessing on the other side of mm. We know it's cold, but we're on fire. This tax season, nobody beats Brandy Wine. Nobody. It's an all out price war. You haven't seen prices and furniture, mattresses, rugs, accessories. Anywhere, nor will you anywhere, we'd love you to shop around, because this tax season, nobody beats Brandywine Furniture. to do more 24 Delaware. My name is Tierra Fair from United Way of Delaware. And I'm Jen Fiani from Spur Impact. We are here to help you and your nonprofit get the most out of this year's Giving Day campaign. Last year we raised nearly $2 million and we know with your help, we can do even better. To help you today, we put together some tips for you to follow. First things first, create a plan. The best way to rock out Do More 24 Delaware is to plan it out. Utilize the marketing toolkit that we provided your team. I firmly believe a failure to plan is a plan to fail. So create a list of potential donors, write out your social media posts ahead of time, and make Do More 24 Delaware a part of your yearly fundraising. Tip number two, get your team involved. Start from the top, work your way down. Make sure everyone knows about Do More 24 and your participation. Let your board know, let your staff know, volunteers, donors. Create a team of individuals to help you amplify your plan. You can make phone calls, send emails, send notes. Just let everybody know that you are participating in Do More 24. Tip number three, use your resources. Did I mention the marketing toolkit? You can find that on domore24de.org or write in your emails every time you sign up for Do More 24. There are templates, sample letters, graphics, and posts you can use. Also, attend as many of the Do More 24 Delaware trainings as you can. There, you will hear from us and other nonprofits that participated in past years with best practices and unique ideas. Last but not least, call email, and smoke signal, or whatever you need to do to get in contact with me or Jen for help. You are not alone with Do More 24. Tip number four, 
If you and your nonprofit are not on social media, now is the time. Take advantage of your network. Let everybody know. Tell your story. Did you know that 69% of all adults in the U.S. are using Facebook? So you should too. More than half of the global Instagram user population is younger than 34 years old. So get social. Tip number five. Tell everyone. Anyone can donate. The more people you share the message with, the more money you raise for your cause. So rule of thumb, get five people to tell five people about Do More 24 Delaware. And there you go. You have 25 donors. High fives all around. So there you have it. Now it's time for us all to work together and make it happen. Remember that we are here for you, so do not hesitate to reach out for guidance and support. Do more 24 Delaware. Let's do it again! I'm Shanae Darby inviting you to consider what better way to celebrate Black History Month than to support a legend of over 50 plus years of dedicated, committed services to the community and the Do More 24 Delaware campaign. Dr. Benjamin Twinby Brown and Community Communications Corporation introduced internet cable to Wilmington and Newcastle County. It is also the creator of Lease Access TV programming you now enjoy here on Channel 28. It is the godfather of the annual Thanksgiving, Christmas dinner, and turkey giveaways to the community for over 40 years. One of the founding members of the Minister's Action Councils, known as IMAC, conducted the largest successful voter education and registration drive ever in our county for over 42 years, conducted studio and on-site hands-on video workshops for youth and adults, created the longest airing local cable TV programming and many more broadcasting entities. He is still active and productive to this day. Oh, what a legacy. If you would like to support Dr. Benjamin Twinby Brown and Community Communications Corporation on the Do More 24 Delaware campaign, contact us at 302-287-4413. If your call is not answered, please leave a clear message carefully stating your name and email address and detailing information will be emailed to you promptly. She say, well, all night, all day, the angel keep, and she used to say, keep a watching. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? All night and all day, the angels keep watch over me.